Joel Austin said, Every setback means you are one step closer to seeing the dream come to pass. Kaibigan, ka-faithful, meron kang panaginip na gusto mong mangyari. At may mga setbacks na pwedeng dumaan sa buhay natin. Pero tandaan mo to, pag may ganyan, one step closer ka na lang, mangyari na. For every dream to come true, we need to have a solid setup. Yang setup na yan ang magagamit natin sa mga detalye ng mga panaginip na ibinibigay sa atin ng Diyos. So let's talk about this, this very day. Set up during setbacks. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity of just listening to your words. We pray that we will understand it and digest it so that our lives will be stronger than before. Let our faith grow in this training time. And thank you so much for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Set up during setbacks. This is the aim of this teaching. Learning, understanding, and doing the three setups in order to prevent or face a setback. So tatlong setup lang po ang pag-uusapan natin. Pero bago ang lahat, kinakailangan natin ang mga ito. At ihanda na po natin ngayon. Bible. May Bible ka ba? Kinakailangan yan ngayon. Pumunta ka na sa kwarto mo at bumalik ka, hintayin kita. Have your Bible with you. Another is notebook o yung mga pwedeng sulatan po natin. May ibang ayaw magsulat, pwede naman yung ating mga tablets. As long as nakafocus tayo at wala tayong ibang binubuksan. And one thing that I ask for is for you to have an engaged mind and an engaged heart. Na hinihiling ko lang ilang minuto na naman to na makasama kita at mapag-usapan ang tungkol sa salita ng ating Panginoon. Okay? So, kunin na po natin yan. Bible, notebook, or ating journal, at yung ating isip at puso kinakailangan para sa training na to. So, what is a setup and what is a setback? Google Dictionary defines setup as the way in which something especially an organization or equipment is organized, planned, or arranged. Kailangan po natin ng mga setup sa bagay-bagay ng ating mga buhay. At yung mga setup na yan ang makakatulong sa atin para lalo tayo magsaksid. But on the other hand, there are setbacks. Cambridge Dictionary defines it as from something that happens that delays or prevents a process from developing. At ito po, mga kaibigan at mga kapatid, ang pumipigil po sa atin para tayo ay magsaksid sa ating mga buhay. Ngayon, naisip ko po ito. Ano kaya ang nasa gitna? What is in the middle of a setup and a setback? We call that a system. Pag wala ito, magkakaroon tayo ng setup. Pag wala ito, hindi magiging maayos ang ating mga setups. So, a system is a process or a strategy that saves you from stress, time, energy, and money. Let me repeat that again for those who are taking notes. A process or a strategy that saves you from stress, time, energy, and money. Nakakatipid ka kapag may maayos kang sistema dahil nakasetup ka na para magsaksid sa iyong buhay. So, coming back to our aim, the three setups. These are the setups needing to be done to prevent us or even for us to be ready to face a setback. Setup number one, assess carefully. Setup number two, pray strategically. And setup number three, act wisely. Let's start with setup number one, assess Carefully. Lahat ng mga bagay, kinakailangan ina-assess o ina-evaluate po natin. In Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 1 to 2, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Akaliah. Now it happened in the month of Kislev, the twentieth year, as I was in Susa, in the citadel, that Hanani, one of 
my brothers came with certain men from Judah and I asked him I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped who had survived the exile and are from Jerusalem or concerning Jerusalem Pakinggan niyo po ito kasi may mga mahalaga makita tayo dito na si Nehemiah nagtanong po siya let me come back to that verse 2 and I asked them concerning the Jews who escaped who had survived the exile and concerning Jerusalem Remember this asking the right questions will lead you to the right solution Right questions right solution Totoo po yan kinakailangan tama ang mga tanong natin na pag tama ang tanong tama din ang mga solusyon na darating sa atin Moving on to verse 3 of Nehemiah chapter 1 and they said to me the remnant there in the province who survived the exile is in great trouble and great shame the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and it and its gates are destroyed by fire alam nyo po knowing the important relevant specifics of the problem is already half of the problem solved kapag na alam na alam mo na ang specifics at alam na alam mo na ang problema kalahati ng problema meron ng solusyon dyan kasi kaya tayo na mong problema palalo kasi hindi talaga natin alam ang tuntuong problema natin si Nehemiah yun po yung ginawa niya tignan po natin coming back to verse 3 Nehemiah's initial problem meron pong superpower na bansa na nag-capture sa Jerusalem isang malaking problema yun kasi they are a country that has been promised by God, but they are totally captured. It is a humbling moment. There were people who survived and were abandoned in that place. Kasi nasakop na eh. So, wala na. Lockdown na yung bansa na yun. At dahil naka-lockdown, wala nang pwedeng pumasok, wala nang pwedeng lumabas. Kawawang kawawa sila. The people are in deep trouble and shame. Talaga kahiyahiya ang nangyari sa nila. Bakit? Because the wall of Jerusalem is broken down. Wasak na wasak na ang wall. At ang gates ng Jerusalem, destroyed by fire. Imagine niyo was, hindi lang siya wasak, tupok. Grabe ang nangyari po sa Israel. But again, let me come back to this. These trying moments can help us learn about one thing. That God humbles us and in this humbling process, our character is being prepared for greater things. Kaya kung may pinagdadaanan po tayo bilang ating pamilya, bilang sarili natin, bilang ating kumpanya, o kung saan man po, tandaan niyo po, na ang Diyos, meron lang pong nilulutong maganda para sa atin. So, to talk about this at mag-seek down ang ating pinag-usapan, let us have these questions. Share this with your discussion partner. What is your challenging moment today or this week? Ano yun? Ano yun? Tanungin natin. And please share important specifics of that challenge. When you knew the important facts, what did it make a difference in approaching the challenge? So, nung nalaman mo na yung maayos na mga facts na yun, na iba ba ang iyong pagdiskarte? Mas naunawaan mo ba ang iyong pinagdadaanan. So, two minutes lang po to share with your partner.
salamat sa mga sagot sa mga tanong na pinag-usapan natin. Huwag tayong magsawa, may mga tanong pa ho tayong sasagutin maya-maya. Coming back to our setup, number two, para tayo po ay mas efektibong makaharap sa mga setback sa ito. Pray strategically. Isipin mo na ikaw ay isang sundalo na lalaban sa isang gera. Lalo yung mga magagaling na mga sundalo like yung mga Marines o yung mga PMA po natin, hindi po sumasabak agad sa gera yan. Nagpaplano muna yan. At tayo, bago lumaban, bago dumiskarte, bago gumawa, na-assess na natin kasi. Yung problema, alam na natin kung anong problema natin, well, we need to approach God. We need to pray strategically. Coming back to Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 4, it says, As soon as I heard these words, I sat down and wept and mourned for days. Miyak po siya, grabe. Talagang wala siyang ibang ginawa, kundi manalangin. And I continued fasting and praying before the God of heaven. So, hindi po agad siya sumugod. That's why in praying strategically, it means we also pray silently. Kina kailangan po natin makuha yung kahalagaan ng praying silently. Si Nehemiah, na natili lang po siya sa lugar na yon, nag-fast po siya. Fasting, prayer, fasting, prayer. At alam po niya na mayroong solusyon ang Diyos ng kalangitan. Moving on to verse 5 to 10. At dito, I want you to be patient in listening to this prayer. Follow me through the Bible. And I said, O Lord, the God of heaven, specific, the great and awesome God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love Him and keep His commandments. Let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your seven. That I now pray before you each day and night for the people of Israel, your servants, confessing the sins of the people of Israel which we have sinned against you. Hindi niya sinabing I have sinned, kundi we have sinned against you. Hindi niya sabing they have sinned, talagang sinabi niya we have sinned against you. Even I, my father's household, father's household, have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. Verse 8, remember, remember, remember the word that you commanded your servant Moses saying, if you are unfaithful, I will scatter you amongst peoples, the peoples. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them through your outcasts, uh, though your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there I will gather them and bring them to the place that I have chosen to make my name dwell there. Ganda. Talagang nandoon yung pag-alala, Panginoon. Kami yung mga pinangakuan mo. Verse 10, They are your servants and your people, whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. Another thing about praying strategically, it means praying specifically. Kung kanina pinag-uusapan natin na yung mga pag-evaluate natin, pag-assess natin ng challenge ay specific, kinakailangan po ang praying strategically should be very, very specific. Hindi natin maiwasa kay Nehemiah yan kasi later, in the story of the book of Nehemiah, we will see him not only, only as a great leader but also as an excellent manager. Siyempre, sa management, mahalaga ang mga specifics. Yung day-to-day -day at minute-to-minute -minute operations. So, here are Nehemiah's prayer specifics from verses 5 to verse 10. On verse 5, you will see Na siya, he praised the Lord God as a covenant, loving, and a promise keeper God. So, he is a God who keeps his covenant, keeps his love, and keeps his promise. Sabi, doon palang inuna niya na. Nanigurado na siya. 
At sinabi niya, itong Diyos natin, sumasagot ng panalangin to. Verse 6, di natin makikita as a detail in his prayer that he asked God's attention to hear the nation's prayer. Parang hinila niya yung tiingan ng Diyos na sa Lord, makinig ka naman. Itong nananalangin na hindi tao lang o hindi ang iyong bayan. Pag ang bayan po ay nanalangin ng taus puso. Kita niyo, isa lang po si Nehemiah sa nanalangin. Pero palagay ko, pati yung mga remnants po at yung mga nahuli po ng mga panahon na they were praying also that one day they would be released. And Nehemiah was the one who would be starting that revolution in them. Another is, verse 7, He sought God's forgiveness for the nation's sin. Kaya nga nangyari that they were caught by a superpower. Why? Because they sinned against God. Pwede mangyari yan hindi lang sa isang tao, kundi sa isang komunidad, pati sa isang bansa. Another, verse 8. He reminded God of His covenant and promise of restoration. Na kahit may pagkakasala na nangyari, ang maganda naman po dyan, kaibigan at kapatid, may restoration na ibinibigay ang Diyos. On verse 9, He prayed the promised repentance from sins and obedience to God. Saan nangako siya? Na Panginoon, titigil na kami sa mga masasamang ginagawa namin at susunod na kami sa inyong salita. And for God, that is a big thing. If you say to God na titigil na, magre-repent na kami at makikinig na kami sa inyo, agad-agad na dinidinig ng Diyos ang ating mga pananang. Another also on verse 10 is he reminded God of the identity of the Israelites as redeemed servants. Grabe. Alam nila kung sino sila. Kaya kahit ngayon ho, sabihin na po natin na tayo po yung mga Christians and we have also the blessings of Abraham. Pero tandaan nyo, they were still the first chosen nation of God. Tayo mga Pilipino, especially those Christians that are Filipinos. Alam nyo, yan ang blessing sa atin. Na yung minana ni Abraham at papala ni Abraham ay pagpapala din natin. Kung baga tayo ay nakiki-share lang ng pagpapala. The point is, pinagpala rin tayo. Jumping to verse 11 of chapter 1, Nehemiah again prayed, O Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who delight to fear your name. And give success to your servant today. And grant him mercy in the sight of man. Now I was cupbearer to the king. Yan sa verse 11 yan, napakamahalaga. Na makikita natin dyan, that praying strategically means praying confidently. Nehemiah was confident to pray. Kasi sinabi niya, Panginoon, kanina sinabi niya, pakinggan mo kami bilang isang bansa. Pero ngayon, sabi niya, Lord, makinig ka sa akin. I am your servant. At yung mga pinapanalangin namin, Panginoon, ito lang, inihingi namin, Lord, give us success today and grant us mercy. And ang mga panahon na yun, handa na siyang humarap sa boss niyang hari. And as we all know, he was cupbearer to the king. Ano ba yung trabaho ng isang cupbearer? Ganito po yung trabaho ng cupbearer. Yung hari po kakain o iinom, lahat ng kakainin at iinom na, iinom na hari, siya muna ang titikim. Hindi ko alam kung si Nehemiah ay mataba. Pero the point is, bago kumain ng hari, sa kanya dumadaan, siya tumitikim. At kung may unang matitigok siya ng huyun, at matindi ho ang kanyang trabaho. Kaya malapit po siya sa hari at kinakailangan pagkatiwalaan ka ng hari para mangyari yun. That's why he was confident. Because he knew his, his identity in God the God of the Israelites, he also knew his identity in front of the king na sumakop sa kanila that he was cupbearer to the king. For us, we must pray confidently. So this is our question that we will share in this next segment. What are you specifically praying to God now? Ano yung pinagpipray mo ngayon? How has God responded to your prayer request? Paano? Paano siya sumagot? For this, let me give you again two minutes. With your partner, answer this now.
Salamat again, ka-faithful at kaibigan sa pagsagot nyo sa tanong na yun. Ano yung mga tanong na sinasagot natin? Right questions will give us the right solutions. Let's now jump to setup number three. Yay! Setup number three na tayo. Totoo lang. Ganda po yan kasi it is all about acting wisely. So, medyo review lang natin. Ano yung setup number one sa pagka-review natin kanina? What is setup number one? It is Assess carefully. Setup number three is pray strategically. Now for setup number three, this is where the rubber meets the road. Kasi hindi lang tayo nagpipray. Meron tayong action na ginagawa. We need to act wisely. Now let's jump to chapter two of the book of Nehemiah. Verses one to three. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, so almost a few months bago nangyari itong pagharap kay King Artaxerxes. When the wine was before him, he took up, I took up the wine and gave it to the king. Kasi, ibig sabihin, pag took up na yun, tinikman niya na yun. At for sure, walang lason. Now, I have been sad in his presence. And the king said to me, Why is your face sad, seeing that you are not sick? This, this is nothing but sadness of the heart. Siguro, baka hindi sanay si King na malungkot itong si Nehemaya. This is the first time that he saw this man so sad. At tignan niyo po yung nag-respond si Nehemiah. Then I was very much afraid. Takot na takot siya. Bakit? Pwede na naman po siyang papatay ng hari. Ano niyo, sa mga panahon dati, lalo yung mga foreign kings, ayaw po nila na maharap sa kanila yung mga tao ng malulungkutin. Kaya kung malulungkutin po tayo, naku, mga panahon dati, tigok tayo. Hindi po pwede yun sa harap ng hari. Kaya e tayo, pag humaharap sa ating Panginoong Diyos, kinakailangan ayusin natin sa rin ito. Meron tayong mga pinagdadaanan. Meron tayong mga struggles sa buhay. But remember this, God is there. And He will help us always. Verse 3, I said to the king, Let the king live forever. Why should not my face be sad when the city, the place of my father's graves lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? Nagang alam na alam niya na yung sitwasyon. And naging honest lang naman po siya. Kaya, we should always do this. Be totally honest about our condition and our situation. Mas kapanipaniwala po kapag humingi po tayo ng tulong kung maging honest tayo sa ating mga kondisyon at ating mga sitwasyon. Mahirap yung magsabi tayo ng ibang kwento at later malalaman na nagsinungaling tayo, hindi na tayo pagkakatiwalaan. Mahalaga na magsabi ng totoo. Verse 45 continue with the story. Then the king said to me, what are you requesting? So I prayed to the God of heaven. And I said to the king, If it pleases the king, if your servant has found favor in your sight, that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's graves, that I may rebuild it. Malaga makita po natin na ganun po talaga ang Diyos pag kumilo sa ating mga buhay. Kinakailangan maging handa po tayo sa pagpapala po niya. Well, in this situation, tinanong siya ng hari, What are you requesting? Kasi, malapit na siya sa loob ng hari. Ilan ba namang mga pagkain na kinain niya na may mga siguro, baka may mga kalukuhang ginagawa ay nasa paligid ng hari, na siguro kung hindi dahil sa kanya ay hindi siya masasalag sa mga dangers ng buhay. Kaya itong hari, simple ng tanong, what are you requesting? At itong nangyari yun, ang ginawa niya, he asked wisdom from God. Pag may mga sitwasyon tayong ganun, na parang trap na tayo, isa na lang gagawin natin, ask wisdom from our heavenly Father. Kinakailangan po natin humingi tayo ng wisdom. Yung wisdom na yan, yun yung practical insight. Kaya sa panahon natin, ang tawag dyan, holy discarte. Yan yung discarding gagamitin natin at galing po yan sa salita ng Diyos. Yung discarding na yan na mabibigay sa atin na talino at galing ay binibigay ng Diyos para malabanan po natin ang mga krisis ng buhay natin. 
But again, kasama po dyan is this. Ask for help in a very respectful and honest way. Si Nehemiah, naging respectful po siya sa mahal na hari. In fact, in the next verses you will see na he respectfully asked for things and even for authority para maayos po niya yung kanyang bayan. Wala na po siyang plano na magtayo pa ng isang bansa, na imatayo pa yung bansa niya, palalabanan yung bansa. Ang inisip na lang niya, maayos po, para malamak pag-survive muli yung kanilang bansa. On verses 6 to 7, continuing Nehemiah chapter 2, And the king said to me, the queen sitting beside him, How long will you be gone and will you return? So, it pleased the king to send me when I had given him a time. So, may time frame. Talaga, alam na ni Hima yung isasagot po niya. Kasi pinag-pray niya eh. At saka, ibinigay na sa kanya ni God ang sasagutin. And I said to king, if it pleases the king, let letters be given. Ito yung Indonesian authority to the governors of the province beyond the river that they, that they may let me pass through until I come to Judah. And a letter to Asaph the keeper of the king's forest <coughs> that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the fortress of the temple and for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall occupy nagkang inayos niya na lahat dahil nag-iisip na po siya na medyo tatagal po siya na unti na noon may time frame siya binigay sa hari and the king granted me what I asked for the good hand of my God was upon me you know whenever we ask for favors to people in a very respectful way. Magugulat ka na lang. Hindi na lang ibibigay nila sa iyan. Kasi ganyan po ang mga tao. Pag marunong po tayong rumispeto, marunong din po silang rumispeto sa ating mga kahilingan. So, listen to this. Be confident in asking help for from both God and even man. Walang masama ang humiling ng tulong sa mga tao. Lalo na't alam mong ginagabay ang kanang Diyos. At kay Nehemiah, yung project po niya na maayos yung lugar po nila, na ayos po nila. Dahil meron ng paghahandang ginagawa. Kaya mga kaibigan, mga kapatid, may setback na nangyari sa kanila. Pero nasolusyonan po ito dahil sa mga prinsipyo yung pinag-aaralan natin ngayon. So, for our last question. Let us share this. What are the important steps you need to take to give solution to your challenging situation? Again, let me give you two minutes with your partner and please share this for this will help them not only understand but learn how to deal with their crisis in life. Sige, two minutes lang po at babalik po ko ulit.
tanong na nasagot natin ngayon. Palagay ko sa mga oras na to, medyo nagkakaroon na tayo ng mas mga practical na mga solusyon sa so, pwede nating harapin sa mga susunod na araw. So, review lang po natin. Ano yung mga setup na kinakailangan nating gawin para maiwasan o maharap po natin ang ating mga setup. Setup number one is assess carefully. Kailangan natin yan. Setup number two, pray strategically. And setup number three, act wisely. Assess carefully, pray strategically, and act wisely. Pag nangyari po yan tulad ni Nehemiah, yung prayer niya, Lord, grant me success today at ibibigay nga sa atin ng Panginoon ang success na to. Before we end this session, I'd like to encourage you with a quote from Steve Harvey. Sabi niya, Your setback is just a setup for your comeback. Ulitin ko yun ha. Ang ganda yun eh. Your setup is just your setback is just a setup for your comeback. Yan ang gusto sa atin ng Panginoon. Kapag bumaksak tayo sa saglit, bumangon po tayo. Kinakailan mag-spring back po tayo. Dahil we were commissioned by God not only to succeed but to serve Him with our lives. At ito po, even if our situation seems hopeless, even for today or even for this week, let us still hope for God's help and the solution for tomorrow. To ngayon, may mga pinagdadaanan tayo. Pero sa kinabukasan niya, mga pinagdadaanan natin, magkakaroon na yung solusyon. Sabi nga ng Bible, yung mga paghihirap po natin, eh, it's only for a moment. Moment lang yan. Iba dyan, pinapaikli na ng Diyos para magawa po niya ang plano niya sa atin. Mga ka-faithful, huwag tayong susuko. Lagi nating tatandaan na kasama natin ng Diyos. Kinakailangan lang natin na alamin ang ating mga challenge na tayong manalangin patuloy at kinakailangan maging wise po tayo. Kinakailangan may set up po tayo during these times of setback. Samahan kita ngayon sa pananalangin and as we pray, believe in a God who gives us the strength to face whatever setbacks that come our way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great time of learning from your words. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for showing to us your grace. And thank you for making us your favored sons and daughters. Today, O oh God, if we are facing setbacks, we pray that this will only be a setup so that we can come back again and fight and win. Thank you so much. Let all our setback be taken away. Panginoon, maset up na po ang mga kinakailangan sistema sa mga buhay namin. At tulungan niyo po kami para magsaksin pa sa mga susunod na araw. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.